بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters People say When I have a lot I will be happy When I have Just like the others have I will be happy Sometimes we have a vehicle For example and we see someone who has a better vehicle and we suddenly lose our happiness because as much as we do have a vehicle but now we've compared it with something that someone else has and so the happiness is either lost or damaged because we're now focused on something else material that is not a necessity but it has snatched away our happiness and for this reason, Allah Almighty has always asked us to look at those who have less than you in order for you to be able to appreciate the favors of Allah upon you when it comes to material items, when it comes to things, when it comes to belongings, wealth, and so on. Look at those who have less than you so that you can appreciate what was given to you. If I have, for example, a vehicle, maybe 2018 Reg, as they call it here in this country, and someone else might have one or might not even have a vehicle to begin with. You know, when you have your first car, when I was young, it was all about having the car. Now the generation is such because of social media, if they're not getting the car they want, they sometimes wouldn't even want a car. Do you agree? Because now it's a matter of prestige, the statement. Who am I? What are people going to think about me? How could I have such a lousy motor vehicle? That's one example. The same goes to clothing, same go goes to perfume. Sometimes people are engrossed or maybe enslaved by names and labels. It's important to note that happiness is not connected to those things simply because, simply because Allah Almighty knows that as time ticks, there will always be something more advanced than what you have. So if you're going to run behind the worldly items, remember they will always run faster than you. Always. You have something within a, a year, less than a year, it's dilapidated or should I say it's considered no longer the latest thing. Now, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, while teaching us to reach out to people with things, while teaching us that it is a pillar of your faith to share what you have with those who don't have it. You know zakah, don't you? I spoke about it yesterday and earlier today. And this is the third time I'm repeating it because it's a point some brothers and sisters have said. We've never heard it worded this way. That you cannot be considered a Muslim if you're not prepared to share what you have with those who do not have it unrelated to you subhanallah <laughs> that's a pillar of islam zakat right i have money money is loved by almost everyone right and it's not bad to to, to like uh, you know having a bit of cash around or something it's not bad but to allow it to overtake your entire existence such that you've forgotten your relationships primarily with Allah, then with everyone else, is problematic. So, while we're taught that you need to reach out to those who don't have, we're also taught that you need to protect yourself from what is known as extravagance in order to achieve long-term contentment. Long-term contentment. Why am I saying long-term and using the term contentment rather than happiness? Because one is short-lived. If I were to tell you or to ask you or the younger lot, should I say, sometimes even though slightly older, what's your dream? If you had one dua that would be accepted right here, right now, what would you ask for? I mean, those who are conscious of Allah would say, I'd like Jannah and forgiveness of Allah. Never mind this world. We can, whatever Allah wants and wills will happen. But ultimately, I want Jannah. That's a wise answer because it's long term. Mashallah. It's eternal. That's what it is. But short term. A lot of people would say, uh, I'd like to be a billionaire or I'd like to have this 
house or this car or this thing, this item in my life, it would make me really happy. I promise you, it is only temporary. You can have it. And if you do have it, it won't be the best forever. If you make a dua now and I tell you, listen, in two years time, that dua will be given to you. So, for example, the dua is, I don't know why I'm speaking about motor vehicles more today, but anyway, I've seen some nice cars coming to Bradford, mashallah. You guys have a taste, alhamdulillah. Uh, I'd love to have 2022 BMW, for example. Uh, example. They call it BM trouble you as well sometimes. But if that dua is answered in two years time, what vehicle do you have? It's still a BMW 2022. And now we're in 2024. Now you no longer want it because why? It's two years old. Same applies to your phones. Oh Allah, grant me the latest. So the latest one is the S22, for example. And you're given it in two years from now. Is, is two years bad? It's not bad. Two years, it's actually quite a short time to, to be honest. If you're asking Allah, the impossible is made possible. For Allah, nothing is impossible. So if Allah gives you after a short while already, it's old. Another very good example. Sometimes you see a person with something that is way beyond your financial reach. And what do we say? Inshallah, I'll get this in Jannah. Have you heard people say that? We might have said it. I may have said it also when I was a bit younger. Inshallah, we'll get this in Jannah. It's not a bad dua. But I promise you, if you had that, never mind Jannah, here on earth, 10 years down the line, you probably would not want it. Do you want me to give you a quick example again? Mashallah. The latest of anything is not the latest as time ticks. You won't want it. Yourself on earth, you don't want it. So how are you going to want it in paradise? So let me tell you what Allah has prepared for us in paradise. Allah says to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ In it, there is that which no eye has ever seen. Have you seen something? Sorry. It's not going to be in Jannah. You might say, well, I've seen people. People will be there, but not in the bodies that you are seeing them in right now. There will be total and absolute perfection in Jannah. You will be stunned. Stunned. My wife. Wow. Ooh. I used to make a dua that I hope I'm not going to be with this woman in Jannah. But yo, I want to be with you, man. Mashallah. Why? Because... Perfection, absolute perfection. I obviously wouldn't be able to give you finer details because Allah's left that. But He promises you, number one, you get whatever you want. Just one condition. I'll tell you the condition. Thereafter, He says, whatever the eye has seen is not qualified to be in paradise. So you see things. It doesn't qualify to be in paradise. I've given you an example before, I think in this hall, of how if you were in love with something in the womb of your mother, you would never want the same thing you loved and enjoyed in that womb once you leave the womb. It's irrelevant. You would actually say, yuck. Do you agree? Same applies. You, go, you crossed from one stage to another, from the womb to this life, and then you're going to cross from this life to the next. When you get to the other side, if someone were to remind you, if in case, you would actually say, yuck, for example. Because it's a new level altogether. It's something beyond your imagination. The hadith says, the eyes have never seen, the ears have never heard. So if you've heard, Sorry, it's not going to be there. It's something way, way beyond the imagination of any one of us. Beyond that, It has never crossed your heart. And in the English language, we would say it hasn't even crossed your mind. Not, not from a distance. It hasn't crossed your mind. So, so I'm going to 
get from Allah something I've never imagined, never seen, never heard, something that I would desire. But what is Allah going to give me if I say I want, for example? I told you the one condition. What's the condition? You have to want it once you get into the hereafter. You can't say from now that I want this glass when I go into paradise because your entire focus at the moment needs to be to get to paradise. Once you're there, I swear by Allah, you will not be let down. So don't let the devil deceive you by making you think for a moment that you know what, if that's what I'm going to get, I don't even want to go there because that's the worst statement you could utter. Don't allow things and statements to make you think that Allah's not going to give you what you desire in the hereafter, in the hereafter. I said it twice because the first one is connected to the desire that has to be in the hereafter. And secondly, you are going to get it in the hereafter. You follow why I said it twice? Let me say it again. So Allah will give you what you desire in the hereafter, in the hereafter. But he's not going to give you what you desire on earth in the hereafter. You follow? Because no mind has ever thought about, no ears have ever heard, no eyes have ever seen. That is what it is. Perfection, absolute perfection. Recently, we spoke about the James Webb telescope and there are a few other telescopes out there. What are they discovering? They're discovering galaxies upon galaxies and planets and countless planets upon planets. So mind boggling that the further these telescopes are going, the more they're discovering. And it's mind boggling because we read a narration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mention the last person to enter paradise. And Allah will ask him, what would you like? And obviously that's the Lord of the worlds. And Allah will ask him beyond that, if we were to give you the entire earth and whatever it contained, would you be happy? And he would say, oh Allah, obviously I would be happy. It would make me happy. And Allah says, فَلَكَ مِثْلُهُ وَمِثْلُهُ وَمِثْلُهُ عَشَرَ مرات. For you alone, alone, one person is that multiplied, multiplied, multiplied ten times. So I can just imagine myself with these ten planets are mine. Today a small piece of land here in Bradford is probably 300 grand, right? Am I right? Was it more? Oh, maybe it depends where, what part of this beautiful city of yours. But yes, imagine 10 times, 10 planets are mine. Oh wow, Allah says, you know what? Not even these planets. It's something mind boggling. But just to give you a little bit of perhaps something to think of. That's what Allah is saying. If that's the last person to go into Jannah, imagine the first few. May Allah make us from among them. Aim high, my brothers, my sisters, aim high. Aim high. Shaitan's plot is actually devilish. It has to be. He is the devil. What does he do? He makes us lose focus upon paradise and he makes us so engrossed with the temporary world that our happiness and sadness is mainly connected to whether or whether not we have material items of this world. Yet, we don't realize I've forgotten while I am meant to work a little bit towards what this world has to offer. No harm. But at the same time, I shouldn't lose focus that my eternal life is going to be after I close my eyes. It is. It is. I mean, people I know have died for longer than I've known. What that means is, say you knew someone who lived 20 years and they died 40 years ago. Uh, what would it be? Or even they died 21 years ago, 25 years ago. They've been dead longer than they were alive. You really think that that was just, uh, you know, their stint here on earth and it's over and done. They're gone into oblivion, back into the atmosphere. No way. I'm too sophisticated. I, and so are you. Too sophisticated to just disappear into thin air. I know for a fact I'm going somewhere. Just like when I was in the womb of my mom 
and it was supposed to be the end of all and suddenly it was the beginning of something mind-boggling i came into this world crying because it was so so different from what i was accustomed to the change of environment was totally totally unique and so i came in and started crying and next best thing i got accustomed to this place slowly but surely why on earth would i think that if i'm going to close my eyes from here i'm not going to go somewhere that is amazing may allah grant us goodness don't despair. Don't despair. A lot of goodness awaits you. Just keep trying. You're a human. Allah knows you're a human being. Allah knows the pressures and the stresses you're going through. Allah knows the environment you're living in. Allah knows the circumstances you're facing more than anyone else. Allah knows the challenges that you have. Allah knows that you're trying to make ends meet. Allah knows everything. Allah knows that you're faltering from time to time. He knows that you're dropping back into the same sin again and again. Each time you regret and say, Oh Allah, I'm weak. I'm a human. Forgive me, Oh Allah. I'm not doing this out of defiance of you. You are my maker. I have none other than you to forgive me, to have mercy on me, to carry me into the hereafter. But it's my human weakness that makes me fall into this. What a beautiful relationship with Allah. What a beautiful relationship with Allah. When you communicate with Him, when you talk to Him, when you try your best five times a day, I'm trying, sometimes people are weak, four times, three times, and others will tell them you're no longer a Muslim. Hang on, ignore those people. You know why? Because as much as they are trying to discourage you from doing the wrong thing, correct, and they're trying to encourage you to do the right thing, correct, but sometimes the approach is hard and harsh. It may drift you further away. You need to know, even if you have not been praying, the day you start is the day you shall succeed. It's not the end of everything. Are you not breathing? Well, there's hope. Hope for me, hope for you. What do I do? Thank Allah for what he's given me. Focus. Focus upon a day when the Lord will prove his mercy. Have you not heard he's the most merciful, the most kind, the most compassionate, the most forgiving, the most amazing? That's my Lord. If he made me, surely he is amazing. I can't wait to meet him. And when I do, I'm convinced he's not just going to throw me aside and punish me and so on. I tried to be a decent person in, in this world. I tried to do good things. I tried. T-R-Y. That's the secret. A loud secret. Not hidden. I tried. And if I tried, subhanAllah, I need to have hope. And if I have hope, what, what will it do to me? It will make me do more and more and more on a daily basis. So perhaps I may not have been that regular with my prayer. I became a little bit more regular, a little bit more regular. It brings about a feeling of warmth in the heart and comfort and contentment to the soul when you're able to worship Allah a little bit more on a daily basis. You're doing one more thing compared to what you were doing yesterday. One more thing. Yesterday, I received a mail from a sister telling me, I heard in one of your lectures where you said that try fulfilling Salatul Tahajjud at least once a month or once a week and see how it changes your life. And she says, I just want to bear witness that I started doing this and it's changed my life. And I know it will. And I know it does. Because Allah promises, when you get up to pray to Allah while the others are asleep, you're not equal to them. You've now arrived at a new level. Don't let it make you feel when they wake up. Listen, guys, you guys were asleep. I've arrived on your new level. Not at all. We're not posting about it. But they may not know or they may know. So what? You cried to Allah. Warm tears. You got up and prayed. Two units of prayer to begin with. Just two. Too much? In fact, you know how it starts. Let me tell you how it starts. It starts with not even getting up for prayer, but setting your clock and getting up at a time when you know that Allah Almighty calls out, saying, who is there asking me, I can give them. Who is there seeking forgiveness, I can forgive them. Who is there repenting so that I can accept that repentance. Just get up and say, oh Allah, I know you're calling out right now when a third of the night remains. And here I am seeking forgiveness. Forgive me, I'm weak. Strengthen me, grant me the ability to do the right thing. Create a barrier between myself and that which displeases you. Amazing dua. That was a dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Yet he did not need it. He made it, oh Allah, create a barrier between us and that which displeases you. Subhanallah. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. So. When we ultimately meet Allah Almighty, we have to meet Him with the greatest of hope. You know, when people are uh, 
at a point where they call it end of life, right? And they gather family members or they start preparing them and so on. You actually need to prepare the person as well. And a lot of the times what the right thing is to do is to give them hope. To give them hope in the mercy of Allah and convince them that there is nothing you have besides that hope in Allah and He will forgive you and He will accept your good deeds and He will multiply them and He will forgive your shortcomings. That's it. They would die with a smile, with hope in Allah. And Allah says, Ana in the vanni abdi bi. I will treat each one of you the way you thought I was going to treat you. Wow. You look at Allah as a merciful Lord, you be merciful. You look at Allah as one who's just going to punish and he doesn't have any mercy. How dare you do that? It's not good for you or for anyone else. Yes, you need to know about the punishment of Allah. You need to believe in it. You need to know that he has said it. You need to know that he has told people you do this. Yes, you will pay for it. But you also need to know that he has said my mercy outweighs the punishment or my anger. By far. So have hope. The world out there is no longer as easy as it was even 20 years ago. You know that. The world out there has challenges, difficulties, hardships. We don't even know how our kids are going to survive and at times how we're going to survive, let alone the kids. It's challenging. And to, uh, to make people lose hope at a time when they're already, already hopeless, regarding worldly matters and you're making them lose hope regarding the Lord of the worlds, you're doing a disservice not only to mankind but to your faith. May Allah grant us goodness and success. My brothers and sisters have hope. Together with that hope, work hard. Wherever you faltered, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Keep going. Keep going. Don't let yourself become engrossed with the worldly race. The rat race, because you keep on going, be content with what you have. When Allah's given you something, use it and make use of it. Yes, if your life rotates around a certain thing, you may want to upgrade it, update it, because perhaps it's your job, perhaps it's your earning, your income, perhaps it's something you definitely need. Some people, for example, uh, they have a company that might hire out vehicles, so they upgrade their vehicles every so often because that's what they need. No problem. It's not being extravagant. It's not being wasteful. I'm talking about being wasteful, being extravagant. You need something all the time. What happens? You don't realize you're occupying your 24-7 thinking about material things and how you're going to upgrade yourself materially tomorrow. Without realizing, have I set aside a time of this day in order to prepare for my hereafter if I don't make it to tomorrow morning? And how would you do that? Simply by reading the Quran. Do you have an app on your phone by any chance, mashallah? Where you might have read a little bit of Quran. Don't worry about what people think about your pace. Your pace is your pace. You know what that means? You might be moving a little bit slower than others in your connection with Allah. And who knows, you might be far closer to Allah than those who appear close. It's possible. Don't worry about what they think. Let them think whatever they want. It's not them whom I'm out to please. It's Allah. The more they say, do you know what? Perhaps the better the chances of you entering paradise and earning the mercy of Allah. He knows. If you could hear, you would hear that. Allah loves you and he knows what they're saying about you. Bear patience. I spoke about it yesterday. I, I said that the other day I was out in one of the cities and a young boy comes to me and he wants to seek forgiveness for having said some really nasty things about me behind my back. Before he completed his sentence, I stopped him. I said, listen, listen, brother, you know what? You're forgiven even before you utter what you said. And even no matter before you said what you said, you were already forgiven because a guy like me, I don't hold it. I don't even have space inside here to hold it against you. You said nasty things, no problem. Not only are you forgiven, but if you have to say it again, you can do it. It's okay. It's fine. If you need to utter the similar words or even worse, it's okay. Let it be. And I'm not being sarcastic and I'm not being stupid and I'm not being silly. Why? He must have thought this guy is probably being sarcastic. But I think we ended on a brilliant note. Smile. Thank you, my brother. No problem. It's okay. 
We are where we are in terms of goodness that Allah has bestowed upon us. Worldly is clear. But spiritually and connectivity with Allah, we hope that Allah accepts it from us. We are where we are because of the package. The package included people talking a lot of rubbish about you. Without that, you would never be where you are today. So thank Allah it happened. Do you get what I said? Thank Allah it happened. It's part of it. If you have to have a secret ingredient in your cake that makes it your cake, I have to keep on having it each time I make that cake. Otherwise, it's going to flop. What is it? People talk a lot about you behind your back. Let them be. It's okay. It's fine. Smile on, my brother. Keep going. It's okay. You know why? Life is so short. You may never know these people. They, with the advent of social media, there are millions of people who know you. You may not know them. They may have seen you and you don't even know they've seen you. They may have commented and today we have a sickness because people need help. They think so negative about themselves that they cannot help but think negative about others. How are you going to help them? Pray for them. Don't get angry that they said a bad word. It's reflective of whom they are, not you. Because those around you who know the real you, know you. That's all. That's all. What are you worried about? Where are you heading? If your aim in this world is to please people, that's it. You will never be able to achieve it. But if your aim in this world is to please Allah, you will please Him by simply trying. That's all. By trying. That's all. Are you trying? You're trying hard. You know your weakness. I know mine. You know what you need to work on. I know mine. I don't need to mention one by one. You know that I need to do this and this and this. Maybe three or four major things and a lot of other small things. I need to work on myself. You need to work on yours too. Are you trying? If you are, good news to you. Good news to you. You are heading in the right direction. If you die in a condition where you were improving on a daily basis and you had an intention to, to get to the end and you passed away prior to getting to the end, Allah already writes it for you as though you got to the end because that's His mercy. Indeed, your actions are judged by their intentions and not necessarily by what you achieved. So that's amazing. That's the mercy of Allah, my brothers, my sisters. So I want to say, let's not run behind this world in a way that makes us forget that we have something beautiful and amazing awaiting us. Number one. Number two is, let's reach out to those who don't have with things that we do have and that we have been blessed with. Let's be kind to others. Let's acknowledge that the Almighty has indeed favored us. And then let's not be extravagant. Let's be happy with the little and let's use what Allah has given us in terms of excess wisely to be able to earn paradise and the reason i say this a day will come when you or your children may not have materially what you have right now and if you're accustomed to a certain lifestyle filled with extravagance you're in trouble because there will come a day when you will be too ashamed to drop your level to the level of what you can now afford due to losses let that not be but if you lived simple always, even when you had and you reached out to others, the day you have or don't have, you won't even notice because you never ever, you never ever relied totally on the excesses that you had. That was just a favor of Allah. We made use of it. We helped others. We still remained humble. We still had our friends and we, we were just one of everyone else. That's a beautiful teaching. Today, they say in Japan and other countries, people have become minimalists. You know, a few things only, three pairs of clothes, four. Wallahi, Islam teaches that. But the Muslims at times are the furthest away from it. My wardrobe, let me talk about it. These thobes or kanduras or, you know, whatever you want to call them, kurta as they call them. I might have about 35, 40 in my guilty, guilty, guilty. Get rid of a few. Inshallah, every now and again, I do get rid of a few. Mashallah. But the same applies to all of us. You look into your closet and see what you have. Do you not have so many things you don't need? You don't use. You don't even want. But it's still there because you know what? Hmm. Let me not say. It needs to be there. No. 
If you can find it in your heart to, to give it away, to sell it and give the money to charity or use the money. Or if you've got it in your heart to empty your closet slightly and become a minimalist. Wallahi, not only will you lead a happier life, but I promise you, you'll be prepared for the day you die when the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed on. They say he left behind absolutely nothing, one or two small items. Done. And he was the Nabi of Allah. The best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine you die and they take years and years and years. <coughs> just to get rid of a few of your clothing items. Come on. Can't you give away a few things? Especially when you're becoming a little bit older. Don't attach yourself to things. Learn to give. Learn to give. When we become too attached to that which we found on earth, we lose the true contentment. Don't and never worry about what people have to say. It's easy. It's easier said than done, but we have to keep repeating it. We have to keep repeating it. MashaAllah. Let's learn to please Allah and automatically the people will be okay with you. They'll be happy, meaning they will be fine. The, the people who deserve that will be good. Some people, they may not be good enough to be pleased with you. They will never be pleased with you. In the eyes of Allah, you may have a very good standing. And if someone doesn't think so, in our language we say, bugger them. Meaning, leave them alone. They can fly a kite. I used to have these little cards in my pocket some time back. How to fly a kite. Three simple ways. Someone gives me beans, I take it out, brother, that's for you, my brother. And when, when I walk away, turn around, he's reading how to fly a kite. Say, wow, that means get lost, man. This was way back. Don't worry. We no longer do that. Now I'll give you a book, inshallah. But my brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful world out there. If you focus on the right things, challenges will come. They have come. And they shall continue coming. But Allah will help you overcome them. With Allah, you have nothing to worry about. And if you think that your intellect alone or your wealth alone or your standing alone is going to help you overcome these things, trust me, you will struggle because that's not going to happen. Allah and Allah alone. And therefore, I end on this note. Have a conviction in your heart. Allah will help me through my challenge. That's it. No matter who you are, be convinced you will overcome the matter that is bothering you by the power of Allah. That's it. Did you hear what I said? Be convinced you will overcome whatever is bothering you. Be it sickness or loss or tragedy or whatever negativity it may be. It is only a phase. You shall overcome it by the qudra, the power, the will, the mercy of Allah. It's going to happen. Be convinced. That conviction alone is enough to earn you paradise. How's that? So even if you're lost in the world, no problem. Allah loves you to be convinced. You're a true believer. You, those who truly believe should lay their trust completely, wholly, totally in Allah. There goes. May Allah Almighty bless every one of us. I hope these few words have motivated us. I'm sitting here beautiful audience in this lovely lovely city of bradford it's a city right yes mashallah it is it's quite big we took a while to get in mashallah and uh it's not been the first time i'm here here a few times i'm looking forward inshallah to meeting some of you guys and may allah almighty grant us uh, togetherness in jannatul firdaus companionship of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the best of the best